Okay, so everyone, thank you very much for joining us. My name is Ami Feiner, and together with me is Ari Treger from Provision ISR Pre-Sale Department. And today's topic is Provision ISR app, Camp 2 app, everything there is to know. Uh, so enjoy. All right, let's start. Cool. Thanks, Ami. Uh, can everyone hear me, first of all? Yes. Ami, can you hear me? Can hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Okay, so hi everyone, um, and thank you for being part of today's webinar. Uh, I'm Ari Trigger, representing the pre-sales department at ProVision ISR. Today our focus is on exploring the capabilities of our CAMP2 application. So our team is very proud of the CAMP2 app, um, backed by the positive market feedback. Installers note its similarity to our VMS and MVR and DVR systems, praising its functionality and visually appealing uh, interface. What sets CAM2 apart is its user-friendly design, highlighted by end users, highlighted by our end user uh, for its ease of use and navigation, and basically it's a smooth experience. So yeah, join me for the next 40 minutes or so um, as I showcase the key features of the CAM2, where simplicity and speed converge for a seamless user experience. So let's begin. Um, I want to start with a general overview of our GUI. So upon opening the app, uh, you'll be directed straight to the live view. Um, if you click on the top right icon, um, it will give you access to your device list, which displays all devices associated with your account. Here you can check if the device is online, access quick settings, share with other users, rename the device and navigate to live view. If you double tap on a channel, it will enlarge it to full screen. And we can customize the layout as well by clicking on the bottom middle icon and then just selecting your desired layout. You can change the layout at any time by just repeating these steps. If you want, you can easily switch between cameras you want to view. Uh, just simply tap on a quadrant that you want to change and then select the camera channel below uh, to make the switch. Okay, we can also scroll through all the channels using the left and right arrows. This is applicable if you've got um, more than the more, more live channels than what is currently being displayed. Um, and you can easily switch between devices by just dragging and dropping the device onto the live view, like so. So we're going to switch to the home device. We've, I've labeled home, and then we can switch to a hospital. Um, so we just basically switch into different devices. If you click on the numbers icon, um, it will actually display the camera names associated with the selected MVR. So if you want, so it will also just ease your your uh, ability to select the correct camera. And you can also capture screenshots um, and videos uh, from the live view by double clicking on the desired channel. Uh, if you tap the screen again, it will show you the camera and video icons. Sorry, let me just go back a second. So it's there, it um, displays the camera and video icon. And if you click on the camera icon, it will take a snapshot and the video icon uh, to begin recording or manual recording. If you click the recording again, uh, it will stop. All snapshots and videos are stored in the app's file directory, uh, which is accessible for sharing when needed. You can also access playback by easy by uh, clicking on the playback icon at the bottom of the of the app. Uh, let's just go back one second. Playback icon over here, and that will take you to will initiate playback on the current channel you are viewing. All right, let's go back. Um, if we hit the three dots on the bottom right, it will bring up more advanced functions, including analytic search and database management, amongst others. And then lastly, I just want to demonstrate remote settings of the local NVR from the CAM2 app itself. So we can go and hit the menu and go to remote settings. And once in remote settings, you can select the device you want to access. And most settings available on the NVR are accessible to you on the CAM2 app as well. So you can add um, or edit an existing camera, for example, directly from the app. 
you can access recording settings. Uh, you can also access system settings. So for example, within this menu, you can adjust the timing date. Uh, so if you connect it to a client, uh, then you need to run to site to change the timing date. You can do it directly from the app. Additionally, you can access account and permission settings, making it easy to add a new user or modify an existing one. And this is for users on the NVR itself, not on the app. Guys, there, there are many more features to explore, but I'll be delving into many of them during this presentation. So I would like to just move on. Um, I'm eager to demonstrate the impressive capabilities of our event search feature uh, within the app. So given the surge of AI in 2022, most cameras now boast AI capabilities. Naturally, we want to empower users to easily search for AI. And with our app, we've made it incredibly simple. So let's go search. So to access the menu, we just simply click on the three dots icon on the bottom right, and then we select search by event. Here, you can search for face detection, human detection, vehicle detection, or combination of these events. So let's just kick off with face detection. So we'll click on face, and it will prompt you to select your desired date range, and then we can hit search. The results um, display all face detection events on all cameras for the specified date range. Um, if you click on a snapshot, it will initiate remote playback, starting from just before the event occurred. And this is old Sylvie uh, on the screen. Now let's backtrack and search for human detection events. Um, the search offers additional filtering options, allowing you to select human detection based on the type of events, such as line crossing, sterile area, or, or object counting. Similar to face search, all the results are presented on the screen. And we can once again click on the snapshot of your choice uh, to play back the event. Okay, so lastly, let's delve into vehicle detection, specifically a license plate match. So let's return to the event search menu. Um, this time we're gonna click on vehicle. Now we can either enter a full or a partial license plate you're searching for. So for this example, I'm gonna search for a partial license plate uh, with, a, with the sequence one, one, one. All right, so we hit uh, start searching and all the results with license plate uh, captures with the sequence 111 will appear in that specific date range. Um, I don't know if you guys can see uh, on your screen quite clearly, but every single result has the sequence 111. Once again, we just select the snapshots to play back the event. So during the remote playback, you also have the flexibility to pause and um, to pinch and to zoom into the image. You can also take snapshots, uh, easily share them through various options like social media, email, WhatsApp, or save them to the cloud, all directly from the app. So whatever options are available on your phone, uh, the app gives you those options as well. And additionally, you can also cut a video of the event and save it to your device. So we can push the manual or we can push record and then it will bring up the cut option. We can drag our timeline and select the time that we want to download. So we can let the, if you want, you can let the footage play as well to get the, the timing exactly right. We can adjust it and then hit download. I also just want you to notice when we play back the downloaded footage, just notice how clear the image is. Uh, it's, it's obviously mainstream once downloaded. So I just want to pause it and we can zoom into the license plate and you can see how sharp the image is. Okay, so 
that's it for event search. I want to move over to um, more diff or different types of event search, more specifically uh, metadata, uh, which um, it's obviously a very powerful and new feature that that's uh, come to Provision ISR. So to conduct a metadata search, let's once again click on the three dots and select search by event. This time, um, we're focusing on, on a human with specific attributes. So the common theme is obviously to define your date range and select your camera. Um, and we're going to select uh, metadata as our event type. We're just busy selecting our camera. Now we can select the event type, which is metadata. And once you've selected metadata, it's going to give you the ability to select attributes that you want to search for. So for this instance, let's search for a uh, male with upper clothing color being black and lower clothing color being blue. And we can hit search to re retrieve the results. So as you can see, there are multiple matches. Uh, we can obviously swipe up and down to navigate through the results. And click on the event or a event to view the detailed snap details. And then we can take it, uh, or I actually want you just to notice the various attributes uh, the system was able to recognize and save. And for those of you familiar with our NVR, uh, it's, it's, it's very similar to the NVR in terms of what it displays. And now obviously we can play back the footage. Okay, so for your convenience, if this is a common search, you have the option to save it for even faster results in the future. So once you've saved it, these searches will appear on the events page, which will obviously streamline your access to frequently used searches. Um, it's also important to note that our app provides you with the capability to search for the vehicle metadata as well. This includes specific details such as the color of the vehicle, uh, the type of the vehicle, uh, even the brand of the vehicle. This feature enhances your ability to conduct precise and tailored searches, ensuring that you can retrieve the information you need with utmost accuracy. Um, all right, so additional, in addition to the features mentioned earlier, our app also enables you to search for loitering and illegal parking events. Uh, for those of you that attended our NVR 1.4.10 release and our CAM 2 1.13.3 release, you would have seen this. Um, so I just want to, for those who didn't, I just want to demonstrate how to search for loitering events, uh, keeping in mind that the same principles apply to searching for illegal parking events as well. So. As with our previous demonstration, the journey always begins by tapping on the three dots on the bottom right corner. And obviously you can navigate to search by event and select human if you're searching for loitering events and vehicles if you're searching for illegal parking events. Um, as we're searching for loitering events, um, I'm going to obviously select humans. And once again, select your, your, your um, date range and select the, the camera you want to search from. And choose your specific events being loitering. So the results will promptly appear. And once again, same common theme, um, click on the snap to give you the snap details and play back the video. So once again, I just want to go on about the common theme. We make it very easy for you to search for events. Uh, the process is basically the same for any type of event. You go to the three dots, uh, you select search by event, you define your date range, you define your um, your cameras, and then you define your event type. And some event types may have additional filtering options as I've just demonstrated. So I'm not gonna show you uh, illegal parking because the principles are exactly the same. So let's just move on to, to playback. And I'd like to show you how easy it is to play back footage, not just from one camera, but from multiple cameras. So hit the playback icon at the bottom of our screen to bring up the remote playback menu.
Okay. You can either quickly scroll through the dates or for a more refined search, hit the calendar icon at the bottom right where you can define a time period as well. Let's just define a random time period. And now I just want you to notice the colors on the timeline. Each color represents a recording type. We can also filter uh, recording types by clicking on this icon at the bottom of your screen. So bring up a menu uh, and you can deselect what you don't want to see on the timeline. So for this example, let's filter only to see AI human face events. Okay, so push OK, uh, we'll bring up the results, adjust the timeline. I want you to notice now the timeline is only displaying blue, which is AI human events. Um, it will also automatically scroll to the beginning of the next event, skipping all irrelevant data in between uh, the events. So next up is synchronized playback across four cameras. Uh, so what we do here is we just click on the layout uh, button and we select uh, four cameras. We can obviously select more, but for this example, I'm going to do four. Um, and then when we scroll on the timeline, notice all four channels sync together. Okay, you can also easily change the camera uh, to play back by selecting the quadrant and then choosing another camera from your existing list. So I don't know if you noticed, I changed the camera on the bottom right and bottom left quadrants. Let's just go back. So I look at the bottom right quadrant and then when you select the left bottom quadrant and then when you select a different channel. Okay, so I just I trust this shows you how easy and intuitive the app is to use. Um, let's let's move on. And one of the most powerful search functions within our app is the ability to search for face recognition events. So, once again, the magic all begins by clicking on the three dots at the bottom right. Uh, but this time, we want to go to search by name. This function operates within our existing face databases on the MVR. We can choose the database group that you want to search. Uh, you can search through all databases if you prefer. Then simply type the person's name who you're trying to search for. In this case, we're going to try to search for myself. Um, next, select your date range and similarity match. Okay, so we hit search and all the results will appear. Notice the search provides, uh, not sure, sorry, notice the details the search provides, uh, including which camera captured the event, the similarity percentage against the database picture and the timestamp of the event. We can scroll through and select the event you want to watch. Um, so, or we can just click this trace button on the top right. All right. This action brings up another results view, breaking down the results into dates. If we hit the play button at the top right, this will initiate trace playback. So trace playback will begin playing back the results in chronological order, allowing the user to quickly scroll through the, uh, the event results. Just another way ProVision ISR improves user efficiency. So now I've demonstrated to you how to search for a face within an established database. Now let's just consider scenarios where you need to locate face outside of a database. For instance, in cases like, I don't know, finding a missing child in a mall or identifying a shoplifter's activities or in public space environment where you need to trace the activity of a suspicious person, just to name a few. We offer two convenient options for performing this task. So option number one involves taking a picture of the person for the search. So we click on the three dots and we select search by image this time. Now you can capture a photo with your phone. Once that's done, we can obviously define the date range and put the sim similarity match and then hit search and all the results will appear on the screen. 
Option two allows you to load a photo from your phone's picture gallery. So follow the steps as before, but instead of taking a picture, you're going to click on the top right to access your phone's gallery. You can choose a picture of the face um, you want. Uh, we're going to define the date range and similarity match, and then hit search and scroll through the results. And click on the events to begin playback. So these options highlight the versatility of face detection as a powerful tool in various situations, offering valuable insights and assistance to uh, or in investigations beyond a predefined database. Okay. Adding a face to an existing database is a breeze with our CAM2 app. So let's say you've got a new employee, uh, there's no need for the tr traditional enrollment readers or accessing the NVR. We've simplified it. You can not only snap a picture of the person, but also upload a picture from the phone's photo gallery. It's as easy as them sending you a selfie. For this example, let's see how to add a face to an existing database by uploading a picture from our phone's gallery. Once again, magic happens with the three dots at the bottom right. This time we're going to select add a new person. The system will prompt you to take a picture, but since we're adding from our phone's gallery, we're going to click on the top right to access the access, sorry, the phone, the, 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 the phone's gallery. Um, choose the photo you want. I don't know if you saw, but we chose Mr. Donald Trump. Uh, and then we upload it. Uh, and then we obviously provide the user's details. Afterwards, um, you can add them to an existing database. So we're going to add them to uh, the sales department. Hit save and you done. It's literally as quick and simple as that. Next, uh, the convenience doesn't stop with faces. Uh, we've got you covered for license plates too. So picture this, a building manager with the power to add a new license plate to an access controlled entrance or from the convenience of his pocket. No need to be on site to even access the, the NVR. So similar to the face, uh, this time you're going to select add license plate. And once we've done that, we're going to fill in the license plate number and any other details you want to capture. So I'm going to click on add a license plate. And then we can fill in the details. And once again, we're able to choose from uh, existing databases to add them to. Obviously, those Permissions will be set up either by the VMS or the NVR, um, and then you hit save and you're done. Okay, I hope you guys are following me. Uh, we're more than halfway there, and I hope you found it interesting so far. I hope you've learned something new that you perhaps you didn't know. Um, I'd like to move on to, to fisheye camera. So for me, uh, the fisheye, uh, is the app's probably the, probably the app's coolest feature. Um, so our developers aimed for an immersive user experience, offering a range of viewing modes. Uh, what makes ProVision ISR unique is the integration of the phone's gyroscope. So adding almost like a virtual reality functionality into our fisheye camera. So I just want you to get ready for a viewing experience like no other. Just so you're aware, I have turned the phone landscape just to elevate the experience. Starting with regular fisheye view, um, you can pinch and zoom in to navigate around the room with your finger. Okay, now let's take it up a notch and activate fisheye mode. So we're gonna to touch on the screen uh, for more options and then you'll see a fisheye icon. Okay, we click on that and we've got six viewing modes for you and here's a quick tour. First is the uh, hemisphere mode. This provides with a uh, provides you with a panoramic half sphere view. We can obviously zoom in as well. Then we have cylinder mode. So we can swipe your finger to scroll through the, uh, the cylindrical panorama. Okay. 
Okay, now we have the option to splice the image. So this divides the view into two 180 degree images. You can also scroll with your finger to explore. We can also splice the image into four blocks. Splice it into four blocks. Okay. Do you notice the auto rotation on all viewing modes? You can disable this auto rotation if you prefer with that button over there. And lastly, let's enable virtual reality mode. So you'll see a VR over here and we can enable it. As simply as moving your phone as if you're playing a mobile race car game, the camera reacts providing a virtual reality experience. It's quite amazing if for those of you who haven't actually experienced it with your uh, holding it in your hand it's actually quite amazing and just by the way this was done all on live view and the same immersive options are available during playback as well just so you're aware okay so in today's world push notifications have become integral uh, this is especially crucial in the realm of security, where swift responses to events are paramount. With our push notifications, we can receive real-time alerts containing essential information, allowing us to take immediate action and heighten our situational awareness. So let's say we get a whole bunch of notifications coming through. Clicking on a notification seamlessly transports you to the specific event. So for this example, it's a line crossing incident. Now the power is in your hands. You can quickly share the event or swiftly play back to review. You can even transition into live view. Okay, um, there is more. You can click on an alarm output. Um, so like a blaring siren, as you just heard, I hope you heard, and all in response to someone stealing a, a chair from the, from, the, uh, from the office. So literally security at your fingertips. Okay. For me, this is a very important topic and I really want you guys to concentrate here um, because we get asked this a lot and I put together um, a, uh, obviously a presentation on it. So I want to discuss adding a device to the app, a device being an NVR, but more specifically binding a device to a user's CAM2 profile, in essence, making them a device owner. A lot of people get confused between binding a device and logging into the device with a username and password, as theoretically you, you scan the same QR code. Anyone who has got access to the NVR by scanning a QR code and entering the username and password of the NVR has full control and viewing rights of the device via the app. There is no list or record of who they are and this information can easily be passed around to other people without the actual NVR admin user ever being aware. This is clearly a security risk. If the device is bound to a user, then that user becomes the owner of the device. Only the owner of the device can share the device to other users, and more specifically, decide which channels to share and decide the permissions of each channel as well. The app keeps a record of who has access to the device and the owner can easily manage sharing permissions, which gives the owner full control over their device. Sorry, excuse me. I want to take you through the journey of binding a device in four simple steps, from creating a new user on the CAM2 app to binding a device to sharing the device and finally managing a shared device. So, for first-time users, 
the initial step is to create a ProVision ISR CAM2 account. We do this by visiting the login page and then clicking on register. It will prompt you to accept our privacy statement, which you uh, can, which you must do. I suppose you've got no choice if you want to use the app. And now you can register with either an email address or cell phone number. In this example, I'm going to register with using an email address. So we just input the email address and create your password. Then we click register now. During the first time registration, authentication is required. So we're going to input a verification code sent to either your email or cell phone. Um, and congratulations, you've created a or registered an account with the CAM2 app. Okay. Just give me one second. Okay, so now it's time to log into your profile. So input the credentials used during this registration. And for security reasons, the first time you log in, it will prompt you for a verification code. Afterward, you'll no longer require this verification method. Okay, now you've signed into your profile, it's time to bind the device. So we go to the server list by clicking on the top right icon. We click on the three dots and we select add a device. It will automatically bring up your camera where you can scan a QR code found within the network and NAT settings of or in the NVR or DVR. I want to just jump to that page on the NVR to further explain this. So just bear with me for a second. So we're currently in the um, NVR NAT setting. Um, and here you'll have your QR code. This QR code, who, 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 who those of you who have scanned and signed in with the username and password, is the same QR code that you would use to bind a device. The only difference is you see there's a security code as well. If um, you sign in or, or bind, or sorry, if you um, add a device to the app using the security code, it actually binds the, the, the device to your, your, your user account. In order to access the security code, you click on the I button and you'll, it will prompt you to input the uh, username and password of the NVR. Then it will display the security code. All right. This security code, like I said, will be used when logging or when, when adding a device to the app. If the NVR or device is bound already, it will show you over here that it has been bound. You can't bound it to another user if it's already been bound. Okay, so let's go back. Oops, sorry. Finger technical issues. One second. Okay, so let's scan the device. And now it will prompt you to give it the device a name. So you can obviously give it a recognizable name, like house, girlfriend's house, mistress house, whatever you want to do. Uh, then we're going to enter the unique code that I just showed you from the NVR net setting page. I just did a simple one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, nine, just as a, an example. Okay, push add. And now you have successfully bound the device to the app or the user account. So you'll notice that the, um, sorry, the signal bars turn green indicating that the device is online. And then you can also click on play to view the live feed. Okay, so the device is bound. Now let's move on to sharing a bound device. So we go back to the server list, again, by clicking the top right icon. This time we're going to click on the share icon and you can share a bound device with another ProVision ISR registered user via email or cell phone number. So it's very important to understand that. You can only share a bound device with another user who has registered an account on the CAM2 app. Okay. So after you input the details of the person you want to share it with, it will prompt you to customize sharing permissions. Here, you can share the entire device or specific cameras. Further to customize and user rights per shared camera. 
So for this example, or for, for this example, you can share the camera. Uh, by default, it will always give the uh, shared user uh, live preview, uh, but you can enable and disable playback, for example, on any camera you choose. Sorry. So once you're satisfied with your user, user permissions, you just click finished and the invitee will be notified that someone has shared a device and can accept or decline the invitation through the CAM2 application. Okay, so lastly, let's manage a shared device. So now you've shared a device, you want to manage the permissions. So we go to a shared device uh, where you'll find, where you'll see a list of shared devices and who the recipients are, who you've shared them with. And then to cancel uh, sharing for an entire device or one camera, make a selection and simply hit cancel. And there you go. So as I've demonstrated, there's a clear advantage to binding a device to the CAM2 user account. So guys, we're almost finished. We've got a couple more topics to go. So please bear with me. Um, some of you may be aware, our system can send you push notifications uh, to the app, uh, email messages, record based on motion, et cetera, et cetera. But what happens if you need to disable these triggers? So for example, I don't know, you're a store owner and you want to, dis and you want to disable receiving notifications and emails while you're at the store. So exactly like an alarm system, when you arrive at work, you disable the alarm, and when you leave, you arm the alarm. For those of you familiar with our NVR, we have a feature called Burglar Alarm. When this feature is enabled, you can set predefined cameras and configure what triggers become inactive and active based on the state of the burglar alarm. Okay. What, is this, what has this got to do with the CAM2 app? Not sure if any of you have ever noticed, but swiping right on the app brings up the burglar alarm virtual button. We give you the control to activate or deactivate the burglar alarm function directly from the app. So when the burglar alarm is active, it will disable the triggers you have set. And when, it, when inactive, the CCTV system will function as normal. And by popular demand, we've just added the ability to activate and deactivate the audio and light on our active deterrence cameras. This feature is now available from our NVR firmware 1.4.10 and our CAM2 app uh, firmware version 1.13.3. Okay, um, guys, we're about to launch a collaboration with Johnson Controls, uh, more specifically DSC and Vasonic Alarms. I'll, I'll just play the video in the background that will demonstrate some of the features while I explain high level how this is going to work as a user. So we're taking the DSC and Vasonic Alarm apps and bringing them into the CAM2 app, where you'll have the same control as you would using the native Alarm app. However, the major difference is that we give you the ability to bind camera channels to alarm zones. So therefore, if an alarm zone triggers, the user will receive a notification with a video verifying the alarm activation. On top of that, as we've merged both apps, the user, sorry, the end user um, will not need to switch between his alarm app and CCTV app, as the user will have full control of both systems via the CAM2 application. We're very excited about this for obvious reasons. And for those who have IDS alarm panels already, I'm sure, I'm not sure if you're aware, uh, but we have had a similar collaboration successfully running for a few months now between the IDS and the CAM2 app. So please keep an eye out for an email invitation in approximately one month or so, inviting you to join us for an official launch event. Okay, and with that, uh, we conclude, or well, I conclude the presentation. I trust you found it engaging and I, that I effectively illustrated the simplicity and power of our CAM2 app. Should you have any additional questions, 
or if you're interested in pr uh, presentations regarding our analytics solutions or VMS, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, just also so you're aware, I'm busy putting together a one page PDF uh, document that's going to provide you with links to the to download the PowerPoint presentations and links to the YouTube videos or presentations that we're going to upload to YouTube. I mean, I'm uh, working on that and we'll be sending that out uh, as soon as possible. So thank you very much, guys.